Who did you vote for and why? I voted for Mitt Romney uh, and the rest of the Republican uh, ticket. Uh, we need to restore liberty, uh, freedom, uh, lower taxation, less government intrusion in our lives. Um, well, those sound like great ideas, but then wh why did you vote for Romney? I think he's espousing the, those correct ideals, lower taxation on the people, getting government back out, pushing regulations back out of the public square, if you will. Uh, he realizes the threat that Obamacare uh, poses to the American people, and I think he's committed to, you know, repeal that. You've got a Don't Tread on Me flag on your bike here as you came to vote today. Do you think that Mitt Romney, uh, well, do, first, do you think of yourself as, as a Tea Party supporter? Uh, I am a Tea Party supporter. Uh, uh, the when uh, Obamacare was coming down the pike, all of a sudden my alert went off. I'm I'm a combat veteran. I'm a law-abiding, tax-paying American. And I'm very concerned with what's happened there. So uh, we we need to shift course. And 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 I think uh, no one is the same as they were prior to Obamacare. Let me say that. And I do support libertarian pr principles, but it's hard to shift gears completely to from what we're on to a, a straight libertarian course. I think right now. So what would the obstacles in that be? Well, there's going to be uh, inertia. I think, you know, you have a Congress to deal with, you know, so any president coming in, even if it was Gary Johnson, who I think very highly of, he would have to work with, uh, and I, I'd primarily include the Democrats as the obstruction to getting to libertarian principles. So I, I find our Republican friends are a lot closer to those ideals and the founding principles than, than the Democrats in Congress, Chuck Schumer, Harry Reid, the rest of them. They need to go. Well, you would think that if you looked at the base of the party, but then if you look at Mitt Romney and his voting record in particular it, as governor of Massachusetts, you know, Gary Johnson was governor of New Mexico for eight years, vetoed more bills in, in that time than all other governors combined while Romney was passing Romney care. Sure. I, we're probably in violent agreement there. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, having said that, uh, I'd like to give uh, Governor Mitt a little bit of slack. You know, what, 87% Democrat uh, legislature. So, you know, there's only so much you can do. And I believe me, I agree with the principles back to constitutionalism. It's just, uh, you know, we've got to start winning some and get to places. I really encourage with his pick of Paul Ryan as vice president. It shows he's serious about, leg uh, you know, government reform there. So uh, By government reform, do you mean like, uh, if you remember during the, the bailouts, you know, um, Paul Ryan was was begging for Congress to pass the bailouts and and begging for the stimulus, making sure that they have more government spending. That's that's not what you're talking about, is it? Yeah, I, I certainly see your point. You know, we're uh, not in a perfect world. I I would I would figure uh, libertarian individuals, a libertarian movement again. You know, just a lot closer to Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney than it would be Barack Obama and and Joe Biden. And we're talking. You know, can we talk uh, shades of gray in this modern time? You know, going from Leninism over to Thomas Jefferson. So, you wait, know. wait, wait. Are you are you comparing Mitt Romney to Thomas Jefferson? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, you know, to the folks, he, he, Mitt Romney. Correct me if I'm wrong. The uh, during the debates, he pointed out life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Did he not? So. You know, he, Maybe you're making the comparison with Jefferson being the founder of the Democratic Party and, and Romney being the originator of, of Romney care and then Obamacare. <laughs> well, as you can tell, I'm not a polished politician, you know. Uh, I just find that, uh, you know, the original framers of the Constitution, can we agree there, a limited government, uh, uh, constitutional freedoms, uh, uh, focus on the na uh, national defense, uh, the common defense, if you will. So he, he's much more, in con I, well, we've kind of meandered a little bit there, but I, I'd say, if you want to say John Adams or, uh, or uh, you know, uh, James Madison, perhaps, you know, I, I, my, my uh, opinion of Mitt Romney, seeing him perform through the campaign and debates, and his record as, as a great American success story, leaves me with a lot of admiration for the man. But if someone is, is like telling you they're going to do something and is, is giving you this great rhetoric and they're, they're giving you a great sales pitch and then, and then they turn around and, and, and do the opposite I mean, and you still go and, and buy more of their product, you know, I mean, what, what does that make you as a customer? Well, so uh, if you want to buy, how about this uh, comparison? If you were going to buy a Yugo or a Cadillac, but you really can't get either, but you bought a nice, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know, a, a Ford uh, a, a Focus, and you did pretty well part of the way. But so, wait, wait, so now you're comparing Mitt Romney to a Ford Focus. Is that okay? But <laughs> that, that's 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 interesting. But but I would I would just suggest that maybe if if you really hold these principles and you hold these values, and 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 you you want to move society in a more libertarian direction, voting for Mitt Romney probably isn't going to be as helpful as even casting a, a protest vote for Gary Johnson at this point, but neither being as significant as saying, I'm not going to endorse either of these, and I'm not going to endorse a system that's going to force me to buy a Ford Focus. Because, you know, that, that sounds like an Obama cash for clunkers kind of program, right? We can buy, you can have any car in the store you want as long as it's a Ford Focus. Yeah. I'm probably older than you, so I've been worn down over the years, and I, I admire you. I'd much rather be talking to you than an Obama supporter, okay? <laughs> so, again, I'll say, you know, in the measures of degree, I think we're a lot closer sure. than, than the alternative. And I agree with that. I hope, and perhaps, how about let's, uh, uh, if we, you know, um, shed a positive light on, maybe Gary Johnson is the next Secretary of Commerce or some important influential uh, uh did, did you see what romney you know has has done and you know, to keep and the commission on presidential debates to keep him out of the conversation i don't think they're going to be exactly in, inviting him to join it now that they've they've kept him out of it so successfully well you know a lot of things can change i think mitt romney's focus now to, we've got to to win and wasn't it uh, uh bob Barr? was bob Barr another libertarian individual member the other day said, bob Barr didn't quite qualify as libertarian <laughs> but he did win the party nominee in in um in 2008 yes okay. see and so you might you know he's probably my age or something like that and you know i'm uh, oh, ideally in, in 10 years we're going to have a good libertarian president you know? okay okay so so but you so you said the reason you're voting for romney is because you, you don't have the youthful vigor quite as much <laughs> you might so so are you're, you're saying basically that you're voting for romney because you're giving up you're giving up and giving in and surrendering and voting for Mitt Romney. No, here uh, what I'm saying is, I, uh, Steve here was I wasn't the same person I probably was three years ago. La di da, oh, government's okay, it's kind of benign and everything, and I believe nothing of the sort now. You know, I've never been a conspiratorialist or you know anti-government or whatever. I'm anti-big government now by all means. So. Uh, and I don't think Mitt Romney's probably the same person he was three years ago. But you've been going through, so you've been going through an, an awakening process. Would you describe it as that? What What have your influences in that process been? Uh, attending a lot of functions where I get to see national leaders. You know, Andrew Breitbart. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of Michelle Bachman, uh, Steve King, folks like this talk about the the uh, Ron Paul, uh, the threats to our our uh, you know our freedoms, our basic mm -hmm. freedoms. And actually, I passed Ron Paul in the airport several weeks ago, and I tried to get, actually, I had a very microcosm of our conversation. <laughs> hey, Congressman, we how about, we got to get Romney in, and this is after the, the nomination, and he gave me the thumbs up. So <laughs> I'm taking that as my Ron Paul endorsement. Uh, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go that far, but um, even then, let's, let's say with, with all those great influences, if, if Romney wins, and in four years' time, we don't have, I know, shocking possibility here, we don't have a smaller government after four years of, of President Romney. Will, will you, do you think you will have evolved further in your perspective and maybe come to a position where we need to be seeking solutions outside of the system entirely? Would this be like, can, can, can we hope that this would be the, the last battle on this front and we would we would move to, to, to other fronts after this one, perhaps? Uh, I'm with you intellectually. You're a good, good man, and uh, your, your alignment, uh, I, again, I'd say in violent agreement. And having said that, here, here's one thing that gives me pause from saying, you know, to jump in, you know, the last three years, uh, Donating money here, supporting candidates here. I'm actually going to be supporting some of our candidates here. Going to the protests here, doing blogs there, you know, writing letters, etc. So I'm kind of alone in this wilderness sometimes. It's just lonely feeling saying, hey, things are bad in the country sometimes, you know. 
and hopefully a little less lonely. And I think libertarians have probably been lonely, but it, we're getting there, you know. And it, we feel you coming. We feel we feel people getting closer. We're not like huddling in the dark corner uh, alone by ourselves anymore. It's it's reassuring to know that there are people who uh, are still voting for Romney but are, are very much in a process of coming to a direction where you're starting to see this and you're starting to see what's really going on. But, you know, I, I was a combat vet too. I am a combat oh, veteran. I was, well, I think what, what, we're, what we are doing now and having this conversation and the kind of conversations that you're talking about in terms of your own local activism are, are a far greater significant service. And I know it's, it's hard to admit, you know, when, when you've put your life on the line for something, but I think one of the things that, that you'll start to see in this process as you start to look behind the curtain is that, you know, I, I, may, may I ask, where did you serve? I was uh, I was a naval uh, aviation vet uh, over in the Gulf. Uh time over Bosnia Herzegovina. Mm -hmm. Those kind of actions. So there. you were you were part of the propaganda cover effort for Bill Clinton, so, uh, something yeah. like that. All right. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. my yes, point I is, was. Well, Hillary Clinton probably she was probably <laughs> the one making the decisions. <laughs> okay. So so you you know it, it's tough to admit. You know I was in Fallujah with the Marines in oh. 2004. You know so I was there for the first battle, but I, I think you're going to start to see. And when you when when you do and when you realize that even to the level of putting lives on the line, supposedly the most sacred thing that our government does in providing, yes. providing for the national defense is just as much a shell game and, and a scam as, as, as anything else our government does. Like you know, Major General Smedley Butler said, war is a racket. And, and in that sense, I think, I think when, you, when you get to that point and you, you, you realize how it relates to your own experience, you're gonna see a, a whole different side of, of government as well. And, and you're gonna look back and, and I think you're gonna be apologizing for voting for Romney if he wins. Just a hunch. Right. Not that you should have been voting for Obama. I'll keep an open mind. <laughs> Definitely, uh, Romney's a lot closer to ideals than Obama is. I'm just, you know, for now. And I, I've lived a, pra I grew up poor. I have to live a pragmatic life. <laughs> we may, we may see about that with Romney. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. So really appreciate it. Thank you. And then they call these arbitrary lines drawn on maps borders. Patriotism is a form of collectivism.